What's up, YouTube? So today, I got a basics on mobility coming at you. My aim for this video is to essentially get you guys to understand some of the basics surrounding mobility. Um, what exactly mobility is, the main components of it, and how to even prepare your own mobility program specific to your needs. I also want to give you guys some generic exercises and stretches that I personally feel like just about everyone should be doing if they do all the main compound lifts like the squat, the bench press, the deadlift, or the overhead press. The one thing I want to be clear on though here is mobility is very specific to the person. So my aim here isn't to create a program for you guys to use for the rest of your lifting career. This is to get you kick-started and doing some stuff if you have no clue what you're doing when it comes to mobility work. So to kick-start this guys, we're going to go through what I feel are the three main components of a good mobility program. There's actually a fourth one which is activation work. However, I didn't include that on here because I feel it's too personal for me to give out some generic exercises or movements for you guys to do because you might end up actually worsening your mobility or movement patterns instead of improving them. So I'm going to just touch the three basic ones that I feel I can give out some generic movements for you guys to do that will help you out. Now before we start, there's going to be a few tools that you guys need in order to perform some of these movements that I have you do here today. The first one is going to be this red resistance band here. Now you can purchase this off of Rogue Fitness or EliteFTS.com or you can find one at any local sports authority. However, it's actually cheaper and better quality from the websites. You're also going to need a foam roller and a lacrosse ball. Again, you can purchase these from various online websites or at your local sports authority or sporting goods store. Now to get started guys, we're going to go over the three main components of a good mobility program and we're also going to cover the definitions and what exactly they are. The first one we're going to touch is dynamic stretching. What is dynamic stretching? Dynamic stretching is any kind of stretch that takes you through movement while you're performing the stretch. For instance, if you look up leg swings, that is a form of a dynamic stretch where you stretch your adductor and abductor through a swinging range of motion. The second main component of a good mobility program is going to be myofascial release. Myofascial release essentially in simple terms is going to be the massaging of your muscles whether it be with a foam roller, a lacrosse ball, or even someone's hands. Now it's a little bit more complicated than the actual massaging of muscles and it does a little bit more than that but we're going to get more into the specifics here in a little bit. The third and last main component of a good mobility program is going to be static stretching. Now static stretching is exactly what you think it is. It's the opposite of dynamic stretching. It's a stretching you hold in position for an extended period of time. Now that we have the definitions of the main components understood, let's take a look at what each of these actually does in a more specific way. Dynamic stretching is going to help improve sport specific warm up. So what is sport specific warm up? Well basically because you're going through movement, you can stretch out in the exact movements you're doing inside your sport or activity that you plan to do ahead. So for instance, if I'm going to go squat and I want to do a dynamic stretch to help me get into a squat, well I'm going to do something like a squat to stand exercise where you actually stretch out by standing up and then going back into a squat, standing up and going back into it. So this is going to help actually prepare me for a very specific movement that I want to do. Dynamic stretching also increases your body temperature, which is another important part of a good warm-up. You want to actually be physically warm to prepare yourself to go lift weights. The last thing dynamic stretching does is it actively engages your muscle bellies. So what does that mean? Well, not only are you stretching certain muscle bellies when you go through these ballistic ranges of motion, you're also activating certain muscles in order to perform this movement. So it prepares you again to be sport specific for the activities you're going to be doing ahead. Now myofascial release, what does myofascial release do? AKA foam rolling, lacrosse ball rolling, stuff like that. Well, the main thing it does, and this is where people get confused, it reduces neurological tone. Now to be honest, if you look at the literature on myofascial release, and this is for some of you smarter guys watching that are uh, kind of interested in this, um, there are no actual long-term effects from it. Uh, every study they've ever done on it show it's actually pretty short-lived what you get out of foam rolling. But that doesn't mean it's useless. What it does do is it seems to reduce neurological tone. Meaning when your muscles get really tensed up, 
that's from the overactivity of your brain sending signals to those muscles and they're just constantly being tensioned on. And so when we foam roll, those muscles help to relax out. It reduces that neurological tone, allowing us to actually release that muscle into a better postured position. Myofascial release also reduces soreness. Now this isn't necessarily a benefit in the sense of our mobility. However, it's just kind of a mental benefit we get if we're squatting very frequently, maybe two, three, or four times a week. This will allow us to actually go into the gym and perform these movements we need to do without having to deal with that nagging soreness. The last thing myofascial release does, which is what I kind of covered up top, is it temporarily increases your flexibility. Again, a lot of people started to hate on foam rolling when they started going through the literature and realized it didn't do much long term. But what it does do is before you go lift, you get a temporary boost in your flexibility if you just foam roll out or use a lacrosse ball to kind of loosen your muscle bellies up. And even though it's not long term, in the short term we can get better ranges of motion on the movements we need to be doing. We can better position ourselves into the spots we need to be in when we're lifting. So lastly down here we have static stretching. So what exactly does static stretching do? Well the main thing it's going to correct muscle and postural imbalances. So how does it do that? Or, or what is a muscle and postural imbalance? So if you've ever seen someone with slumped over shoulders or their butt sticks way out and their abs are way overextended, these are postural issues. And a lot of the time when people are in those positions for a long time, their muscle bellies actually get short. And dynamic stretching and myofascial release usually aren't gonna be enough to fix those postural issues over the long term. So static stretching, not only does it help get us back into better positions, it creates long-term flexibility increases. And that's very important for maintaining our good posture and muscle balance throughout our body. All right, now that you guys got the three main components understood of a basic mobility program, we're gonna move on to some exercises and some stretches you guys can be doing at home. Now I wanna make this clear. This is just kind of like a kickstart package, so to say, for a mobility program. This is very generic, and these exercises I'm giving you guys today are just things that I've noticed almost every lifter needs to be doing. However, everyone's gonna have their own mobility problems that they need to address specifically for themselves. You guys will need to be able to do your own research at home and figure out what exactly is going on with your body and figure out other mobility exercises to perform for those problems. This is just kind of a one and done overall of the whole body that I feel everyone should be doing uh, pre and post workout. All right, now it's time to actually show you guys these exercises. So if you have those tools already at hand that I listed earlier, go ahead and grab them and come back to this video. All right, guys, time to start narrating. So you're going to grab that red band I had you get earlier, and you're going to perform what's called a banded shoulder dislocation. Um, main things to point out on this exercise, my elbows are completely locked out as I'm doing this, and I'm rotating with both arms at the same time, forward and back. However, in a second, I'm going to get more range of motion by doing one arm at a time. Another thing to notice is my completely creepy stare. <laughs> I have no clue why the hell I was looking at the camera like that, but it's kind of disturbing. You don't need that for maximum mobility. Also note, this would be considered a dynamic stretch. This next one here, guys, is another dynamic stretch. It's called a leg swing. This one's really good to start the workouts off with. So what you want to do is essentially just grab onto something and basically swing your legs left to right and then forward and back, always making sure your abs are held tight. Now here, guys, you can see that I'm going to start myofascially releasing my glute med, my abductors, my adductors, and my TFL. I'm starting here on the glute. I pointed to the part of the muscle belly I want you to focus rolling on. You want to really try to press as much weight onto it as possible. You also want to always make sure the muscle belly stretch, which is why I had my leg up like that. Again, here I'm pointing to the area I'd like you guys to roll out. So you can see I start down near the kneecap on the side of the leg, and I go all the way up into the TFL, which is that kind of hip crease. <clears throat> On this part, now I'm focusing on the adductor, the muscles that bring the knees together, and I'm really kind of getting in there deep by sticking my leg out and kind of showing off dad ass. <laughs>
And then we're going to continue with some more uh, myofascial release, this time using a lacrosse ball on the shoulder into the pec. This one's actually really important for squatting, as weird as that sounds, especially if you low bar squat, just getting those arms behind the bar. Here's a close-up of it. Make sure you really dig in there hard, guys. All right, for these last two guys, we're going to get into some static stretching. So get into this knee position like I'm in here. Now watch my glutes and my abs. I'm going to flex the hell out of both of them like I just did there. And that's what creates that huge stretch down the front of my thigh. Real important, you keep both of those flexed the entire time. And you don't want to lean in with this one. You want to stay neutral. Thigh and your back should be completely neutral and straight up and down. And for this last one, you basically just go grab a rack or a doorway and just lean in with your thumbs pointing backwards. That's really all there is to it. Uh, with both of these, don't hold more than 30 seconds pre-workout. Also, wink at the camera like a douchebag, just like I did. And uh, if you're doing these at home for extra flexibility, feel free to hold these for a little bit longer than 30 seconds. You can go up to three minutes for increased flexibility. All right guys, so there's a how-to on the basics of mobility and where to get started with a simple program for all you guys to try out. Now what I want you to realize here that I'm going to stress again is your mobility needs are very specific to you and there could be thousands of issues going on with your body. The only way for you to ever actually have a very specific mobility program for yourself is to go out and research what issues you're having. For instance, again, if you have like lumbar flexion in a deadlift, you need to go out and research what's causing that, figure out the problem, and then address it with specific mobility exercises to target that problem. So I can't stress that enough. Go out and figure out what you guys need to do for your own specific bodies. But for now, this should be enough to kind of just get you in the gym and get you moving through some basic ranges of motion. Alright guys, thank you so much for watching and tuning into my video. If you have any questions or comments, go ahead and leave them down below. And until next time, I'm going to see you guys later.